let's go over some curved sketching ideas that we've already seen. So the sort of uh, function I'm thinking of here is one where we have a, a fraction polynomial on a polynomial, that sort of function. And so we want to rewrite the function so it is that polynomial on a polynomial. Now let's find the y-intercept. Obviously we substitute in x equals zero because we know x equals zero on the y-axis. Find the x-intercept. Once it's written as one fraction, we can just look at the numerator. Solve that equals zero. Um, we could perform a polynomial division to go and find any asymptotes, things like that. But once we uh, perform it, then our function, which was some polynomial on top of another polynomial, we can now rewrite it as quotient plus remainder on divisor. And when it's in that form, then the bottom of the fraction, uh, well, that, that finds the vertical asymptotes. The, uh, the quotient turns out to be the horizontal or oblique asymptote, depending on what that function turns out to be. And uh, let's say the top of the, the fraction in this form, well, that will tell us if it cuts that horizontal or oblique asymptote. Other thing to just look for are things like symmetry, because that can be useful in drawing graphs. Because if you know it's got rotational symmetry or reflectional symmetry. Asymptotes. Okay, we know about our vertical asymptotes. So that's from when we have exclusions in the domain. Right. We never touch or cut vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, right, that's when the function converges to a specific value. Another way we found uh, these would be now using limits. We could use the idea of limits to do that. Uh, and it is okay for curves to cut and touch because horizontal asymptotes are telling you what happens out at the extremities, what happens out at infinity. So anywhere else, it can still cut and what have you. Three limits. Hmm, what are these three limits? Okay, remember that one, that's always handy. The one over x equals zero. So that's the one I was just talking about. We use that limit to, we could find the horizontal asymptotes. Exponential. So you have your backwards exponential, the e to the minus x. So as x approaches infinity, that curve will approach zero. And then the other way around, if you've got your regular exponential, as x approaches negative infinity, that one would approach zero. So if I wanted to find the limit of this sort of thing, theoretically, I could divide everything by x squared, of course, and we end up with one plus zero on zero minus one, negative one. The quickest way, of course, is to look at just the highest uh, power, the coefficients of the highest power. So x squared is the highest power, and straight away then I can say, oh, it's 1 on negative 1, negative 1. But something like this, e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 e to the x. Now it's approaching positive infinity. So I want to rewrite this fraction. So all of those are in terms of e to the minus x, because that's the limit I know as x approaches infinity. The e to the x doesn't help me. So I can do that by dividing everything by e to the power of x. So if I divide everything by e to the power of x, I now get 1 plus e to the minus 2x. So the e to the minus 2x is the backwards exponential. We know that bit's going to go to zero, so the limit of this would be a half. So it depends on whether I'm going to infinity or whether I'm going to minus infinity. So what would happen with this function at minus infinity? Well, now the limit I'm, I want is e to the power of positive x. So now if I multiply everything by e to the x, that'll get rid of the e to the negative x's. And I'll end up with e to the 2x plus 1 on 2e to the 2x. Now, those e to the 2x's we know are going to go to 0. So I get 1 on 0, undefined. But that usually means that if it's undefined, we're heading off to infinity. So if we had to sketch this one, x cubed minus 9x over x squared minus 4, y-intercept, sub in x equals 0, x-intercepts, and we get, so let's plot those. There's my x-intercepts at, uh, what is it, negative 3, 0, and 3. So I do our polynomial division. I now know there'll be vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 2. So I'll pop those in, and there'll be an oblique asymptote at y equals x. The curve meets the asymptote. Well, yes, it does, because the top of that fraction can equal zero. And again, that's going to be at x equals zero. We bend towards the asymptotes. It's an odd function. That's the other thing you notice there. So we know we've got rotational symmetry. There it is. So it bends towards our asymptotes. Um, the only 
question, I suppose, is in the middle. I've drawn it in this way. The only other question was, well, it might have gone the reverse of that. And I guess that's just a matter of testing a point to see if it's positive or negative, and then you know which way around it's going. Okay, so we'll play with that curve sketching.